Hi, this is Marty from Blue Lightning TV. I'm going to show you how to create a stippled portrait similar to the head cut style of drawing associated with the Wall Street Journal's half column portrait illustrations. Before we begin, if you haven't already subscribed to my channel, click that subscribe button to let you know as soon as I upload new Photoshop tutorials. Open a photo of a face that you'd like to use for this project. I downloaded this one from Shutterstock. The first step is to crop our subject. Open your crop tool and click the clear button. This clears out the width, height, and resolution. In the height field, type in 870 pixels and for the resolution, type in 150 pixels per inch. This will ensure that your results will look similar to mine. Go to each of the sides and drag them in or out until you're happy with its cropping. Then click the check mark at the top. To fit it back onto your screen, press Ctrl or Command 0. Next, we'll make a selection around our subject so we can separate it from its background. There are many ways to do this, but for this example, let's use the Quick Selection tool. If you're using CC 2018 or later, click the Select Subject button. This automatically detects the subject and makes a selection around it. If you're using an earlier version, drag the tool inside the subject to select it. To remove areas of the selection, press and hold Alt or Option as you drag over those areas. Click the Layer Mask icon to make a layer mask next to our subject. Make a new layer below it by Control or Command clicking the New Layer icon. We'll fill it with white, but before we do, Check your foreground and background colors. If they aren't black and white respectively, press D on your keyboard. Since white is our background color, press Ctrl or Command plus Delete. We'll convert our visible image into a smart object so we can modify it non-destructively. To do this, shift click the subject to make it active as well and click the icon at the upper right. Click Convert to Smart Object. Click the Adjustment Layer icon and click black and white. Next, we'll brighten the darkest areas of our subject so we can see more detail in them. Make the subject active and go to Image, Adjustments, and Shadows Highlights. Right now, we'll only be adjusting the shadows. However, if you want to see the highlights and adjustments as well, check Show More Options. Make the amount 30% the Tone 30%, and the Radius 10 pixels. As I toggle the shadows and highlights off and on, you can see how it brightened the details in the darkest tones of our subject. Go to Filter, Artistic, and Paint Daubs. Make the brush size 1, the sharpness 30, and the brush type simple. To see your image at 100%, press Ctrl or Command 1. Make a copy of the layer by pressing Ctrl or Command J. Click the eyeball icon next to the paint daubs of the copy to hide this filter. Double click Shadows Highlights. If you see this message, it's just letting us know that the smart filters will be temporarily turned off while we make adjustments to the filter. Make the shadows amount 80% the Tone 20%, and the Radius 20 pixels. Make the Highlights amount 25%, and the Tone 100%. Change the Blend Mode to Darken. Click the Adjustment Layer icon and click Levels. Make the Input Highlights 100 and the Input Midtones 0.3. We'll make a composite snapshot of our visible image and make it into a separate document. To do this, make the black and white adjustment layer active and press Alt Control Shift E on Windows or Option Command Shift E on a Mac. Click the icon at the upper right and click Duplicate Layer. Open the document list and click New. For its name, I'll type in Stipple Portrait, but you can name it whatever you like. Then click OK or press Enter or Return. 
Notice it saved our image as a brand new document. Go to Image, Mode, and Grayscale. If you see this message, click Discard and go back to Image, Mode, and Bitmap. Click OK to flatten it. Use Diffusion Dither for the method. For this example, I'll make the output 150 pixels per inch to match our original document's resolution. However, if you type in a lower amount, such as 100 pixels per inch or 72 pixels per inch, it'll make your portrait have less dots, giving it a more simplified look. Go back to Image, Mode, and Grayscale, and keep its size ratio 1. Lastly, go back to Image, Mode, and RGB color. If you want, you can add color to your portrait. One way is to open the Adjustments panel. If you don't see it, go to Window and Adjustments. Click the Gradient Map icon and click the Gradient Bar. You can click various gradient presets or create your own custom gradient map. Another way is to click the Adjustment Layer icon and click Gradient. Open your Gradient Presets and click one for now. Then click OK. Change its Blend Mode. For this example, I'll pick Linear Dodge, but feel free to choose other Blend Modes. Double-click the Gradient Thumbnail to open the Gradient Fill window. Then have fun experimenting with the presets.